In 2013, a mutated strain of the cordyceps fungus began to spread in the United States. In a matter of months, roughly 60% of humanity was either killed or infected by the fungus. Once someone is infected by the fungus, it grows while the host is still alive, and we see four different stages of infection in The Last of Us. The first stage usually begins within two days of an infection, where the host will lose their higher brain function, meaning they're hyper-aggressive, they're incapable of reason or rational thought, making them inhuman, essentially. The infected person usually reaches stage two within a couple of weeks. Here we see the fungus continue its growth on the person, altering their sight and making them more irritable and even more inhuman. Since the fungus continues to grow while the infected person is still alive, it takes about a year to reach stage three of the infection. Here we see the fungus completely covering the person's head, making them blind and having to resort to a form of echolocation to find their way around the environment. If, by some miracle, the host has managed to survive about 10 years past the initial infection, they'll enter stage 4. Here, the growth of the fungus has covered basically their entire body and created hardened fungal plates. When we look at these stages, you can immediately see how dangerous they are for people unaware of what's happening. Even in the prologue of the first game, right at the beginning of the infection, we see how unprepared Joel and the town are for the first stage, the runners. And as the infection worsens, the infected get more dangerous, turning to stalkers, clickers, and bloaters. Like so many other zombie movies and games, the infection can spread through bites from the infected. A person can only be infected while alive, as the fungus doesn't affect the dead. But when that infected person dies, they leave fungal growths that spread spores and infect survivors who aren't aware of the effects or who are unprepared. In the games, the characters make use of gas masks, to get through the heavily spored areas. There's no way that early survivors would have been prepared to deal with both the infected and an airborne fungus before they knew what was even happening. So, could this infection happen in real life? Short answer, probably not. For a bit of background, the fungus in The Last of Us is based on the cordyceps fungus, which has hundreds of species in real life. Each of these species is slightly different and have different effects, but mainly target insects. Some versions affect caterpillars, while other more familiar versions affect carpenter ants. When an ant is infected, the fungus first takes control of the muscles, then it eventually leads the ant to a higher branch where it forces the ant to hang off the branch from its mouth. When the ant eventually dies, the fungus releases spores which fall on unsuspecting ants below. Sounds familiar? The difference here is that the real life fungus takes control of the muscles instead of the brain like in the games. About 50% of the ant is fungus by the time the infection is at its peak. The interesting part is that the fungus could attack the brain if it wanted to. Instead, it only takes the body and leaves the brain intact so that it can force the ant to climb to a high point and hang there until it dies. It contracts the muscles in the ant's body to make its mouth close on the leaf or the branch or wherever it is high up so that it can stay there until it dies. At this point, the ant is similar to the last stage of the infected in The Last of Us. It has fungus all over its body, making them like bloaters. When it comes to humans, fungal infections are actually pretty common. People die all the time from fungal diseases, especially if they're immunocompromised. The question isn't if a fungus could infect a person, it's whether or not the cordyceps fungus could control a person if it infected them. Uh, from David Hughes, a disease biologist who advised on the Last of Us series, he says, the fungus already has compounds in it that have historically affected human behavior. Ergo is a fungus that lives inside grasses and that is evolved from the worms and the ants and it produces alkaloids that control behavior. In Europe, there was something called St. Anthony's fire, which is these convulsive deliriums that have been going on for thousands of years as people ate infected rye. There's even a strong suggestion that the madness of the Salem witch trials in the 1600s were due to people eating infected rye which contained this fungus. Based on that quote from Hughes, this might sound like we could be infected at any time, but the fungus is not exposed to humans long or often enough to adapt to our bodies. We don't make a habit of eating insects often enough or in high enough quantities to have the fungus affect a person and adapt quickly enough to infect other people. 
before you start celebrating, there is a couple of other ways that the cordyceps fungus could infect people. We actually currently use the fungus during organ transplants to help with patients' immune systems. The helpful portion of the fungus is isolated in labs and injected into patients. If done correctly, there's no chance that the fungus could mutate into a version that could control humans. But you could see how, if the fungus itself managed to somehow be exposed to these patients, it could mutate within them and start infecting others. In this case, her body temperature would suppress the fungus most likely, except for some immunocompromised people. Another way the fungus could infect enough people to mutate is through crowded conditions and poor living environments. Viruses like COVID-19 can easily spread from person to person in populated areas, as we've seen during the pandemic. Fungi, however, do not spread as easily. It would need people to be crowded together and in poor living conditions to spread quickly. Another note from Hughes. After the hurricane in New Orleans, for example, where it was flooded, there was a lot of fungal infections and contaminants afterwards because of the conditions of mold. Another fungus called valley fever tends to transmit very well in prisons because you have crowded conditions and it tends to be damp. It even differentially affects different races, so there might be a way in which certain people are more likely to be infected than others. So, even though Hughes says we can be infected in these specific conditions, it's still very unlikely that the fungus would make a jump from insect to human. It has happened before, the Black Death in Europe jumped from insect to rat and then to humans. Because ants are almost impossible to get rid of, it's theoretically possible for an animal to get close to the ants and then to us. Only certain species of ants have been affected by the fungus though, and it's very unlikely for an animal to be close to both these ants specifically and to humans. Humans also have a much higher level of species diversity than ants. Even if the fungus could mutate, it may not have the same effects on humans as it does on the ants due to different races, different physiologies, and different living conditions for each person. But let's say that the fungus does mutate. Could it spread as quickly as it did in The Last of Us and kill as many people? Most likely not. It wouldn't create aggressive infected since the real life version doesn't target the brain but the muscles instead. If we take a look at the current COVID pandemic, we can see that viruses spread qu extremely quickly but it is compounded by the resistance to medical advice in certain parts of the world and the lack of medical resources in others. Because the fungus spreads slower, it would not reach as many people as quickly as COVID, making it easier to contain and to fight. So even though it's possible for humans to be exposed and infected by the cordyceps fungus, it's highly unlikely that it will ever mutate far enough to control a human body and infect others, just like in The Last of Us. This makes it almost impossible for the real life fungus to ever reach a similar level of danger as in The Last of Us, since it can't create the original runners to quickly overwhelm the unaware population. It also wouldn't be able to create stage two, three, and four and have even more dangerous infected. Even if it did mutate, a pandemic as a result of the cordyceps fungus would be much easier to control than past and current viral infections since those infect more people much more quickly. I'd still probably cancel any organ transplants and ant dinners that you might have coming up just in case.